What's up, fish tank people? Dustin's fish tanks, Dustin's pond. Bringing you a little bit of garden pond action today. How's everybody doing? I hope you're doing well. So in today's video, I'm gonna bring you a little bit of garden pond action, a little early spring garden pond, but I have to tell you folks, this video is being shot at about, I don't know, nine o'clock in the morning. I've had three cups of coffee, three cups of coffee, and I just got back from a really epic run. Uh, the birds are chirping, you can hear them in the background, the sun is out, and it's just an absolutely beautiful day. And I say that as a backdrop because this pond is an absolutely beautiful part of my outside chilling, like connected with nature being. So in today's video, uh, I want to talk about what's going on with the pond to start behind me here, what I'm doing, what I'm not doing, plants I'm going to add, plants I'm not going to add yet, things I'm doing with the fish, and some general stuff going on with the pond, as well as some predators that are back. So this is by far and away my favorite spot to sit and chill out. This place, this seat right here, actually takes priority in sitting in front of my own 220 and the B26 downstairs. Yes, if I got a choice, I'm gonna be sitting outside in the direct sunlight in the morning with a cup of coffee, straight chilling. I believe the great prophet Joe Rogan said nature is the great balancer. That is 100% true. Like I spent my time when I had my busted knee sitting out here the whole time, I actually slept out here uh, around this time uh, last year when I had knee surgery. So yeah, sitting right here is the best and here's why. I sit here, I chill here, put my feet up like this, I can sit over there. But most importantly, I can rotate around here like this and this is what I'm viewing. So the pond is an integral part of that. Before it used to just be bare grass, obviously the pond is a total win. But as you can see, the pond has a little bit of algae going on, but today I wanna show you what I got going on with some of the plants. Okay, so one of the cool parts about having an outdoor garden pond is you don't have to do a whole lot if you do it right. This pond is done with the Aquascape ecosystem in mind. That's a rocked-in pond. I know a lot of people have beef with the rocked-in style. I really, really like the look of it, even with all the algae on it. But one of the fun things about this pond is it's got a lot of native plants, or at least plants that will come back every year. These are some cannas right here. I've got some parrot's feather up in there with all the algae. I got some other cannas over there. And I forget what that is, but uh, I've also got some of this uh, invasive, I think it's a horsetail rush or whatever, which always seems to bounce back real hard. Now you'll note in the greenhouse, I also keep a couple of plants that I bring out when it's warm enough. Key term there, when it's warm enough. I wanna point out when it's warm enough. Well, here's when it's warm enough. Here's when it's not warm enough. You'll notice. This is frost on the grass. Now look, we've had some pretty nice days, but then it turns around and gets cold. And in fact, we're supposed to get about three inches of snow this weekend. So this is inhibiting me from doing some of the things that I would like to do with the pond. Let me explain. So one of my favorite things to do, of course, is to sit here and feed my koi. I absolutely love the koi. The koi are like dogs. They come up and they greet me and they actually wait for Daddy Dustin to give them food. Unfortunately, I have killed goldfish, not koi, but I've killed goldfish in the past by having them in the greenhouse when they have a temperature swing. When you feed a fish when it's warm, the fish is active, the fish is out, the fish is hungry. The problem is you feed that fish when it's hungry, all of a sudden the temperature drops, that fish digestive system slows down and may not be able to process the food in it. Now look, koi have a more sturdy build than fancy like compact goldfish, but nevertheless, these are my babies. Why risk it? Another thing I'd like to do with this pond is do a nice big water change. Unfortunately, I'm not trying to mess with the temperature coming out of my tap versus the temperature in this pond until they're both about the same. Sure, I could probably do a little bit of a water change, but again, the water coming out of my tap is too cold or this water is different in the temperature. I don't want to risk that. I could do probably a 20% water change, but right now I'm just kind of letting it roll. Plus we've had a ridiculous amount of rain the past few days, so it has gotten some sort of a water change, if you will, if nothing else, a good top off. One thing I can do though is get rid of all this out. This is my net from 1972. Actually, I think it's Steve's old net he left over here. If you guys don't remember Steve, click links around here and check out his discus videos and some of his old fish tanks. But anyway, 
this net is old, whatever, but it will do the job as I get here. And this stuff, unlike in an aquarium, as you can click links around and check out the no maintenance tank I've been battling algae on, this is actually super easy to get out of here. So not a problem at all to manually remove all this. You'll notice here there's a line in there. See that fishing line right there? That is to prevent something that I'm about to talk about here in just a second. Another thing I love about this pond is this overflow right here. I absolutely love this. I've never had one before. This is from our friends at Aquascape, my man Greg, the pond guy. You can click links around and check out all of his daily pond videos. But this thing is absolutely great. Here is some uh, water lettuce that we have. It's actually holding up to the cold, but all this stuff is running in. You can see how it flows here. It's a nice little sur surface skim and removes all that. It slowly pulls it into here and all I gotta do is yank this out. Take it like this. It's real easy to do with the camera in your hand, by the way, and dump it. Boom, like that. You'll notice the kids' uh, candy wrappers or whatever. But yeah, I can spray that out and clean it, but you get the idea. Notice the flow increases when the water flow increases. I've showed this in other videos, but this is a cool thing too. If I wanna fill the pond up, this is the overflow spot. So this is actually built into my retaining wall right here. When the water comes out of there or overflows there, it comes out right down here. It's pretty slick. And the neutral cover on it. But my wonderful fish tank friends, I would love to tell you it's all fun and games here in the garden pond. But in fact, things are not good and not as great as they seem because we have some predators that have decided to come back yet again for another season here in Dustin's garden pond. Let me explain. You see, when I was setting up this garden pond and first putting fish into it, my guy Art at Western Carolina Waterscape said something to me that I didn't really believe at the time. And what he said to me is this, he goes, you're gonna buy all these fish, but you're not gonna end up with all of these fish. The following fish are no longer with us. My yellow Yamabuki Ogon, my Deutz Nezu Ogon, and my other just plain Ogon, I believe it is. Three gold, literally yellow colored fish are no longer with us, as well as Tiger Style. Tiger Style, welcome back to the pond. I know you have been in here before, but you were removed after the raccoon incident. Sorry about all the poop. Just gonna let you go like this so that we don't get too much of the bag full of the poop. Head on out, buddy. Head on out, buddy. Head on out. Up and out. You know what? It's not easy to do with the camera, by the way. There you go. A little too much of the poop in the bag, but there's my boy. There you go, my brother. Yes, folks, that's right. There is one, two, three, four, five koi that Dusty no longer has in this pond. Here's what happened. As some of you might recall, when I first set this pond up, I was greeted by a raccoon. The raccoon got my Deutz Nezu Ogon, which was a scaleless gold awesome fish that I named the Emperor. Would you name a fish that sucked the Emperor? No, the Emperor was an amazing fish. Well, the Emperor was the first fish of several fish that have been eaten by a predator, but it wasn't just the raccoon. Last season, we also had a heron. But this year, early in the morning, I noticed a different type of heron, a little shorter, more like a uh, night heron type bird, not as big as the great blue heron. But here's the good news. I have my dog over here, right here, Brave, and she actually stepped up to the plate this year. Good morning, heron. You can eat all the worms you want. Cannot come near my pond. You understand? You are not welcome in this yard. You do not come up here. You do not come past the tree. 
actually a really dope bird too. It's a smaller heron. And look at that, look at that worthless dog right there. Worthless dog. Can't even chase the heron. There's the dog, there's the heron. Get her, Brave. Get her. Get her, Brave. Get the bird. Get her. Yes! Finally! Good job, dog. Good job. Good work, Brave. That's right, folks. I'm not a dog person. I think dogs are insecure animals, just like the dude in Meet the Fockers. But I will say, I'm proud of little Brave this year, for I believe she might actually help me combat the heron problem. Do me a favor, folks. If you like what I'm doing, hit the subscribe button and the notification button. I am doing daily videos, me and this worthless dog here. Let me know what you think about this garden pond. Click the links around here and tank on. Later.